Welcome to week 18, the final week of five picks in five minutes. I'm Tim Kalinowski, joined by Chris Raybon. Last week, Raybon, you swept the board 3-0. and You're 29-21-1 on the season. Well, I, guess what? I went 1-1. One one. I'm 17-17 and on the season. But, you know, so I'm not going to beat you this year. And I said that at the beginning of the season, that my pledge was to beat you. Um, you can't do that going 500, but I will say, hey, funny enough, if I somehow go 2-0 this week, I will be 52. I will be 52.7% on the season. Can somehow have a winning record, uh, even when you factor in the vig there. So uh, that's what I'm playing for. You know, this is it's like week week 18. Teams are playing for different things. And before I hand it over to you, just a reminder that you can tell all of our picks for free thanks to our sponsor, BetMGM, the king of sportsbooks. They have an incredible offer for new users. Use bonus code ACTION when signing up to get up to $1,500 paid back in bonus bets. If you don't win your first bet, terms and conditions apply. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER for the final time this season. Raybon, you are on the clock. All right, let's finish it up strong. Uh, first pick, we are going with the uh, Houston Texans, minus one and a half at the Indianapolis Colts. And for me, this just comes down to the matchup at quarterback. You have C.J. Stroud going against uh, Gardner Minshew, who's been one of the most turnover-prone quarterbacks in the league. The Colts are also top two in our luck rankings. And schematically, this is a great matchup for Stroud. Uh, the Colts play some of the most zone uh, in the league and Stroud, his numbers, you know, 111 passer rating against zone, just the 84 against man. So like the matchup, like the quarterback, like the spot, uh, give me Houston minus one and a half. Yeah, it's well done. I like this pick as well. I grabbed Houston plus one and a half early in the week because I'm sharp as a tack, Raybon. How about this? This is ugly. My first pick, Carolina plus four and a half hosting the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And right now, there's a tax to be played on Tampa Bay if you want to bet them. And, you know, this whole idea about teams that have to win to get in, well, Stucky dropped a nice note in Evan Abrams' wonderful article that he publishes on Action Network every week. Since 1990, eliminated teams playing teams that need to win over the final two weeks of the regular season have gone 164-4. in four. That's 61% against the spread and just to, you know further this point a month ago the bucks were minus three and a half at home against carolina and they tampa bay won by three so bang on the spread there and now all of a sudden a month later it's four and a half you know at carolina no it just makes no sense and to cap it off nick giffen you mentioned him earlier our luck rankings he has the bucks as the fourth luckiest team in the nfl carolina as the number one unluckiest team in the nfl hold your nose one last time carolina plus four and a half yeah, I'm pretty sure uh, we were on this Carolina team when they covered that that last time. So let's try to make it two for two with my next pick. I'm going ugly Baltimore plus four at home against Pittsburgh. I, I think this line is just way too high. Uh, another team you're paying a tax for in the Steelers because they're facing backups. You know, they need to win. Baltimore has already got everything locked up. Oh, by the way, Pittsburgh, number one in our luck rankings, the most luckiest team in the NFL. And this is a letdown spot for Tomlin when favored uh, by three or more on the road coming off a win. Tomlin just 10 and 24 against the spread, 29% in his career with the Steelers failing to cover by just under four points per game on average. Give me the Ravens plus four. I think this should be closer to a pick em, Tim. Yeah, you know, you get the sense that even if Pittsburgh wins this game, it's going to be by the hair of their chin. That's kind of how it's gone for the Steelers. Uh, Ravens, you know, obviously going to want to make their divisional foe work for it. Speaking of divisional foes, that's what we have all week uh, in week 18. The Giants plus five against the Philadelphia Eagles. And this, to me, is really about um, – a play on the Cowboys to have a big lead uh, over the Commanders. These two games are going to start at the same time. If the Cowboys win and the Eagles win, the Cowboys are getting that number two seed in the NFC. So the Eagles will be scoreboard watching here. And, you know, that like 
the Gi the Cowboys are 13 and a half point uh, favorites. So I think it's a very, you know, likely scenario that, you know, Sirianni and, and company go look at the scoreboard there in the stadium and say, oh, well, I think we can take out our starters here, bench the big dogs, let them rest up for the playoffs. I also like the idea that the Giants have been, you know, really comparable or, or competent rather with Tyrod Taylor and, and punching above their weight. Still don't trust this Philly team. feel like I'm getting five free points here in a game that Philly could just roll over in the first half. So give me the G-men one last time plus the points. Yeah, you keep waiting for a get right spot for the Eagles, and it just doesn't seem to be coming. The last time I really have seen the Eagles look right, to be quite honest, was the Super Bowl. Ironically, <laughs> a game which they lost. But uh, it, it's been a little shaky all year long, even during the 10-1 and start. But uh, let's close it out with the Minnesota Vikings plus three and a half at the Detroit Lions. And uh, I like Nick Mullins getting a start here because... Number one, you have this situation where Detroit, they do play early, so you could uh, be a little bit careful because you know, they would need the Cowboys and the Eagles to lose to to get you know to jump up in seeding. But Nick Mullins averaging over eight yards in attempt. Uh, he is going to turn the ball over some, but last time these two teams played, the Vikings averaged you know over seven yards per play. The Lions were around you know five and a half. So, you know, Minnesota really outplayed the Lions, get, caught some bad breaks with, I mean, obviously the turnovers, but also just some uh, some some calls that didn't go their way. So I think Minnesota, you're going to get the best effort here. Uh, I think the Lions, you know, uncharted territory for them heading to the playoffs might be a little tight, little careful here. So give me Minnesota. Great. I, I like the matchup with their blitz against Jared Goff as well. Yeah, I mean, Nick Mullins, he just throws one less interception in that game a couple weeks ago, and it's completely different. So I like where you're looking there. He's, I mean, Hall last week. I mean, how can you not go back to Mullins even with the turnover? So that's going to be an exciting one to watch. At the very least, dome teams chucking the rock around. And that's going to do it for us. Uh, Ray Bond in week 18. It was uh, it was tremendous to go back and forth with you all year. It was a pleasure. And make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so you never miss an episode, uh, especially next year as well. And make sure to comment below your favorite picks and your favorite bets for this final week of the NFL regular season. Good luck, everyone.